Hey you, I am coming to you live from Miami Beach. In this video, I want to talk about why you should learn Python programming in 2019. And thank you, somebody gave me, actually helped me with that title as well, because that's not one of my strengths. But what I did want to talk about is why that's going to be so important. And I want to talk about a few predictions into the upcoming year. So a little bit about this job opportunity, like overall, why you should actually give a shit, the big reason. And then we can talk about some of the nerdy reasons why Python is cool, so because that's the part where I get excited about. Why learn Python? Okay, so without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Okay, so why learn Python? Well, what I want to talk about is why learn programming, first of all, in general. You want to be able to have more job security. You want to have a job that most of the world is going to be moving towards. But more importantly, you want to do something that's exciting. You want to be able to create something from your head and get paid for it. Those are the reasons why I like programming in general. But if you look at Forbes, uh, I was reading something on Forbes and it said it, by the time it's 2030, 800 million jobs will actually be taken over by AI. Okay, so for example, your Uber, your Lyft, and all these things, the self-checkout services, all of these things are gonna be done by something with AI and probably not gonna have drivers or people at the cash register. So what that means is the world is gonna be moving to people who can actually program and create those things. So the job opportunity for people who are programming will be improving in the upcoming years and the upcoming decades, all right? So that's gonna be one exciting part. Now, why Python specifically? Well, because most of this is gonna require data science, machine learning, and Python is actually one of the best languages for that, and it's becoming hotter and hotter for those reasons. So it's becoming the most common, the norm, for when it comes to data science, machine learning, what have you. That's gonna be a skill set that's gonna to be tougher for you to learn, but if you learn it, you're gonna be pretty much unstoppable in the upcoming years. So that's one huge reason I mentioned Python. Um, other reasons why I mentioned Python, I mentioned it in lots of my other videos, like top four programming languages to learn first, or top five programming languages to learn first. But the reason why I mentioned Python so much is because it's ease of use, how close it is to reading like English, the writing is a lot easier and it's just lots of things just work commonsensically, right? For example, if you're doing something in C, C++, you gotta tell the freaking thing what type, what data type you expect this function to return. Sometimes if you don't do that, the function will break down. So these are more of the nerdy things, right? And if you are new to coding, that thing can stop you in your tracks because if you're new, you don't freaking know what data types even are, much less what the data type the function is gonna return. So good luck learning about a function which requires you to know data types and you don't know data types, okay? So it just adds more complexity and that's just one example of it. Python, there's such simple tools you can use to actually run Python. For example, if you look up Replit, R-E-P-L dot I-T, the CEO and founder of Replit actually worked on lots of other things. Like he was an engineer at Facebook and uh, he founded obviously Replit, which is now used by many, many different companies, including Google. And um, Umjid made a fantastic tool. And you can go on this tool and you can use some other languages too there. But the uh, the, one of the languages that's really easy to use online there is Python. And you can actually just run your code. You don't have to install anything. You can just get started. So it's really good for if you're a beginner. And it's also really good if you are even a more intermediate developer because the skill set of this will take you forever to master, right? Because programming is ultimately thinking. The syntax doesn't matter so much. But you also don't want the syntax to stop you from learning or improving and getting better faster. So those are a lot of the reasons why I am such a big proponent of Python. The community of Python is fantastic. If you go to events like PyCon that take place every year, I mean, those are some of the most amazing uh, events you could go to. And when it comes to lots of other languages, they have their own, but PyCon is personally my favorite. And other than that, besides having a job, job besides having better job opportunities, um, you know, salaries for developers ranging from sixty to seventy thousand dollars a year, all the way to about three hundred thousand dollars a year or more. But it depends what type of job you're doing, obviously, right? For example, if you are doing something very basic, you are not very good at Python, something that most other people are doing. Like, just for example, if you're doing web development, which is still a useful skill 
but there's so many people that are web developers you can be making between sixty thousand to hundred thousand dollars a year okay but if you are a quant and you're a data scientist then it's very possible you could actually be making around two hundred three hundred thousand dollars a year or more like at wall street some of these quants are making five hundred thousand dollars a year okay so that's a really high number but i just want to tell you what that range can look like depending on your skill set your ability to be irreplaceable like how hard it is to replace you right and then how good you are at what you do this is something bob proctor talks about which i love and he said three things will determine your income okay one is the demand for what it is that you do second is how good you are at that thing and third which is actually one of the most important the third thing is how hard is it to replace you so python there's huge demands if you take the time and become good at it that's going to be amazing right so you can take the time and become good at it and number three if you become so good that it's really hard to replace you you are or you're doing something so difficult that's really hard to replace you you're automatically going to be at a point where you can demand a much higher income without being irreplaceable so those are a lot of the reasons why i love python now some of the more technical reasons are that it's a very well developed language with an amazing community so for lots of things you can go on github and you can look up these projects that are already completed and there's a big community support so you can actually just use a lot of those libraries to make things work for yourself and it's most of it is really straightforward most of the stuff you can just do pip install and install these new packages you can bring in new libraries into your own code and be able to work on these much bigger projects without running into like even installation problems then other nerdy reasons that are good is that you don't have to compile code to make it run. You can run it on the fly. So yes, overall, it makes the speed of your code a little bit slower, but there are packages that can make your code, you take your Python code and almost make it as fast as the programming language like C, okay? So it's not like you're really losing speed either. And other reasons is because it's easier, it allows you as a developer to be more effective and productive so you can actually be doing a lot more with your time because if you are learning you're doing something with another language sometimes the language itself can slow you down you know and you have to create lots of things from scratch for example take something like C you have to create almost everything from scratch it doesn't encourage you to use a lot of existing libraries and stuff it's good in its own way depending on what type of projects you're doing but for most of the other things you're doing, you know, whether it's web development, front-end development, back-end development, you're doing software, regular software development, Python is really powerful because it makes you much more effective and productive at writing code. You don't have to do everything from scratch. You can leverage a lot of the existing tools. Now, other reasons I mentioned in many of my other videos, but if you're new to the channel, first of all, I just wanna say thank you for being here. Consider subscribing. There's a lot of tools, tips and tricks, motivational stuff, negotiation stuff, but everything to help you become a better developer, land a job, and be on your path to becoming a six-figure developer. Now, with that said, let me continue. So, those are other reasons, but in my other videos, what I, uh, you know, what I have said a lot is that lots of companies are using it as well. So, you want to see what companies are using your programming language and how popular it is. So, for example, there are programming languages that are not used a lot. <laughs> Scheme is not used that much. PHP is an ugly language and uh, most people are kind of going away from it even though a big part of the world is doing it but it doesn't the scope of it in the future is not looking that great then you have other languages which are smaller and hot and upcoming but you want to look at something that has data in the past and has a higher upward trend Python has that and Python is used you know Google is mainly developed by Python and Sergey Brin says Python where we can, see where we must. So the founder of Google says that. So he's trying to use Python wherever they can and then see where they must. So that should tell you that it's an awesome language. So Google is using it. Instagram is built mainly off of Python. Quora is built off of Python. Dropbox is built off of Python. Hipmunk and you know the list continues to go on. But my point with telling you these things is that, look, big companies are using it. 
the predictions in terms of what's going to be happening in the future with programming and how programming is going to be taking over lots of jobs and things are going to be moving more and more to web development and data science and machine learning and all of that. Python is predisposed to be powerful in that and is becoming the norm for all of those. So that's going to give you a bigger trend. In 2018, it was Google more than Kim Kardashian. That should also tell you it's pretty popular. With all and Python programming, right? I'm not talking about Python Snake. So if you take all of these things into account, what you get is a powerful language that will give you job stability, which gives you a strong future, which makes sure that none of your time is wasted into actually learning it, which puts you in a place where you could potentially be earning a high income, let's say in a few years, and you can even be on your path to making six figures or more. Again, that depends on what your overall goal is. It gives you opportunities to work as a freelancer, a consultant, a full-time developer. It's a language that has all those options open for you, okay? And if you go deep into it and work on just problem solving and becoming a better developer, the future for you is very, very, very bright. Now, you can be in any language. The most important things are to understand concepts. I get that. But I want you to pick something and work on a language where you're not worrying about the syntax so much. You can just do what you came here to fucking do. Build projects, build real world practical applications as fast as humanly possible. Be as effective, productive, and efficient as fast as possible. And the computer and programming, it's like a genie on your side. It allows, you have infinite power. If you tell the computer what to do, it will do it. But you need a tool to be able to speak to it. So it's like infinite ge genie with infinite powers, but the only way to speak to it is through programming language. Why not pick a language that's the easiest to speak to the computer with instead of a language that's really hard? Like you could speak to people in Mandarin or you could speak to people in Spanish or English or some other language in real life. You want to start off with the easier language, then maybe learn Mandarin, right? Because Mandarin is going to be a lot harder. So similarly, when it comes to programming and development, Learn to express your thoughts, emotions, feelings, real world applications and all that through a programming language that's easier and has an amazing future. And then if you want to branch out and learn some other stuff, go for it. That's going to be awesome. So that's my, that's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I love your face and I'll see you in the next video. I have an incredible video that I want you to go and see that I've put together. Okay, this video is unbelievable. This video will show you how I went from being a dumb, broke Oakland Community College student to making $104,000 a year as a developer. I put together. What would it mean for you if you made your first $1,000 from coding? What would it mean for you if I revealed to you my step-by-step -step system that I use to go from being completely broke to then learning how to code in just a few months? landing my contract as a freelancer with Python and being able to make $20,000 while I was a terrible Oakton Community College student and to then being able to live the lifestyle I want on my own terms and have the ability to have my own time, freedom, money and have the ability to make an impact on the world and at the same time travel with my friends be there for my family you know when we hit 300,000 subscribers go to all these events even now I'm in Miami at 10x growth con with Grant Cardone how does that lifestyle come about as a Python developer I was able to create that lifestyle for myself and in this video I want to show you that how you can do that for yourself take students like for example John Navarro who went from working with me from complete zero to becoming a senior data scientist or Nazar Mali, who landed a $130,000 contract and now he has moved to Germany with his family and living an amazing life. Or a Farin Sheikh, who was able to make $20,000 after she took one of our programs. But before we continue, I do want to talk about the opportunity that exists in 2019 and moving forward as a Python developer. So please go watch this video. It's an epic video I've put together. Click on the link below in the description and it's going to take you to it. With that said, thank you so much for watching. As always, I love your face and I'll see you in that other video. So go click there. I'll see you right there. Click there. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Ah! Thank <laughs> you.